Welcome to another video of Mortal Medicine. I'm your host, Kid Ambudic, and today I will take you on a tour of the neuroscience of addiction and how NoFap can upgrade your brain. Subscribe to improve your medical literacy and do not forget to like. First off, the problem that I diagnose with a lot of men is that they are addicted to busting nuts to internet pornography. Busting your seed without the social cues of a woman decrease your testosterone. And this eventually causes lack of motivation and spiraling out of control. This is one of the reasons that people feel guilty after the deed. So how then does porn trick millions, even billions of men across the globe to waste their seed? To understand this, let me show you this research. In this research, they're talking about supernatural stimuli. Animals, according to this review of stimuli, respond more strongly to stimuli associated with the highest relative reward. The researchers then made beautiful butterflies that the males tried to mate with, while the real females were ignored. The beautiful fake butterfly has a higher relative reward than the natural ones. Keep relative reward in mind as this comes in play when you think about porn addiction. So biology has pressured animals to evolve to react to above average alternatives so that survival and thriving could be ensured. What happens in the brain of these butterflies? In their brain, the nucleus accumbens, the pleasure center, releases dopamine, which gives a good feeling. In humans, the same structure can be found, as seen here. When binging, all the dopamine gets released in your nucleus accumbens and you enter a blissful state where everything is amazing. Your brain is telling yourself that yes, you did it, you have achieved what was needed, you are surviving and you are thriving. Now if you binge for a long time, eventually the behaviors that led to this good feeling get stuck in your brain. So if you binge for a long time, eventually the pathways of your brain that bring this feeling get stronger. So let's say you get a lot of dopamine out of drinking a lot of alcohol. Eventually all those behaviors before you took that drink will get stronger. That's why people who are alcoholic lie, because they lie to get another drink. And then when they get the dopamine, then the lies get set in stone in their brain. So if you binge for a long time, the behaviors and pathways of your brain cells get stronger. This is called the mesolimbic dopamine pathway. Thus, these pathways are used more often and more easily, and they are stuck in your memory. You are on top of the world when binging, but what goes up must come down. And then the withdrawals start. After a few moments, the dopamine decreases and you feel terrible. You feel like you have lack of focus and you're trying to distract yourself from this feeling. And after a long time of this up and down rhythm, your receptors will get used to all the dopamine being released. So the receptors will get down-regulated in the nucleus accumbens. Meaning that your brain needs more dopamine to get the same level of pleasure. So you need new stimuli to bust the same amount of good nut. So you need new stimuli to get you up to the same level of pleasure. This is called tolerance and it happens with every addiction out there. That's why Tony Montana from Scarface could snort piles of cocaine that would kill an elephant. This tolerance can then throw you in the rabbit hole of debauchery and degeneracy. You need more messed up things to get to that same blissful feeling again. It's comparable to chasing the dragon, like that South Park Guitar Hero episode. You know you are addicted to something when you do it, that you don't even like it. I, for example, got hooked on Instagram. When I was opening it up, I thought, I don't even care about what these people are posting. Because most of it is just trash. So, but I still did it. So that's when I knew that I was hooked. I was addicted. So addiction is doing something all the time that you don't even like doing. Share this video with a friend that is in dire need. Now with this tolerance and withdrawal, the amygdala is stimulated. This part of the brain takes care of the fight or flight response. 
amygdala regulates feelings of fear and actually causes your body to react to that. You can actually feel this, you can actually feel your amygdala working. For example, if you've seen a video of a brutal fight, maybe like the UFC or something like that, you can actually feel your blood pressure rising and your blood almost like boiling. You can feel your blood rushing quickly. And that is because your amygdala is activating and it's preparing your body to fight, just like you see on the screen. Now in addiction, the amygdala tells your body that something is missing. You get this restless feeling. That's what you get, especially when after you bust a nut, you get this restless feeling because, oh my god, what now? Now what? There is this oblivion, there is this emptiness, and this emptiness is felt by your amygdala and tells your body to move to do something else and your body tells your amygdala that something is wrong with the hormones with adrenaline and with cortisol cortisol is a stress hormone so this lack of dopamine is felt and that is eventually translated into feeling shitty or having low motivation now in modern times it's easy to escape the shitty feeling and not to face reality directly that is why internet porn addiction goes hand in hand with video games and weed. Young men are wasting their time and life energy on these things. And during all this, the patterns of addiction get more and more ingrained. It becomes harder to break through these unhealthy ways of living and in severe cases even lead to brain damage. In this study, they showed that addiction decreases white matter in the brain. What this means is that the connections in the brain are deteriorating. Think about that. Doing something which most people see as harmless can make your brain function less. You become less of a man and become dependent on outside stimuli to feel something. What a sad way of living. It's not all hopeless however. There's one amazing brain structure which separates us from low intelligence beings such as butterflies that get fooled till they die. We have our saving grace, the part of us that brings forward the best in us, our frontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is also in the mesolimbic dopamine pathway and sends out GABA signals to the nucleus accumbens and the amygdala. GABA is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter. In this way, the signals of feeling bad can be decreased by the brain area that is made for planning and control in most people. This area finishes development close to the age of 30. For women, it's somewhat sooner, around 25. If you stay addicted, then this area develops more slowly and you will have a harder time getting your shit together. But if you take action, action towards bettering your situation, for example, cleaning your room or reading a book, your frontal cortex gets stronger. Every time you make a decision that is harder for you to do, but ultimately better, your big brain gets stronger and your lizard brain gets weaker. You get more XP for the most powerful part of your brain and you can easily level it up by 20 in one year. So why nofap? Fooling your brain into looking at pictures and thinking it's a real deal is a bad way forward. It actively hampers your brain activity. It makes you less able to control yourself and it can fuck up your life. Nofap is the first step towards unlearning unhealthy habits that shrink your brain. Do you want to be ruled by your reptile brain? Or do you want to become a demigod who conquers himself? Either you step on a success curve, or you suffer by your own hand. The choice is yours. Remember to subscribe and like, hit the bell as well.